Okay, so today is Tuesday, August, and we're gonna be heading down to the San Diego Air and Space Museum, which is located in Belleville Park. So uh, what makes Tuesday special is that the second Tuesday of the month, folks with a San Diego County driver's license or some form of identification saying you live in San Diego are allowed to get into the museum for free. Whereas normally it's about 20, 25 bucks to get in. So yeah, today we're gonna go down and check it out. So come on along. Here in the Central Pavilion, this was the old 1935 Ford automotive exhibit. It's now in its present configuration as the San Diego Air and Space Museum. And again, this is a now here in front we have the famous these conveyors, Sea Dart, built for the US Navy. And this thing actually flew in San Diego Bay at one point in time. This is the museum guide here. And then if you're looking for it, there's a map of the whole Balboa Park. Snag a couple of these. And for residents, uh, first Tuesday of the month, you can see this. These are the freebies here. So yeah, good to know if you're. Uh... So and this is the I charge a little extra for this one, but this is the above and beyond section here, which costs. See, they've got the mercury capsule, looks like some Apollo capsules in the back there. So. What's the charge to get in now? Eight dollars. Eight bucks, okay. Name is Charles Lindbergh, Spirit of 17, Spirit of St. Louis, excuse me, Spirit of St. Louis. This was built here in San Diego by Ryan Aeronautical. This is right there. Ryan Airlines. Now this is the main pavilion area when you walk in, when you first come in through the front doors. Bell X1. Going by Chuck Yeager. The real rebuild of the right flyer. And the different early aircraft shown here hanging up from the suspended from the ceiling. Bright glider. And for those of you in San Diego who know about Montgomery Field, this uh, is dedicated to John Montgomery. He was a uh, early pioneer in modern aviation. I'll head off here to the right. Start with the old school stuff here. there.
And if you haven't figured out, this is a great place for kids, bring your kids too, because a lot of this stuff is low, a lot of these zip is low, and uh, yeah, you can actually interact with some of this stuff here. A lot of visual stuff, for, particularly for kids. Barnstormers. It's been the uh, post World War One era. See the top. Classic JN4D Jenny. Remember too that. After World War I, a lot of this aircraft was surplus aircraft. Wasn't being used anymore because the war, the Great War was over. So uh, a lot of the stuff was available for sale to the general public. On the military back in the 70s and 80s, you'll remember Pacific Southwest Airlines. This was a famous budget, one of the original budget airlines that was founded. All the various stewardess outfits. I remember sitting in airplane seats like that. <laughs> Talk about uncomfortable. Yeah, good old PSA. This was the this was the carrier of choice for the U.S. military. Cheap and usually on time, and it had that reputation. Of course, the name for PSA for Sailors Airline, of course. And this looks kind of like a mishmash of aviation errors. Pit special here, racing planes. It's like the Boeing, I think that was called the Brewster Buffalo there. What a B-24, I think that's what that is. I'll look it up in a second.
P51 Mustang. Flying Tigers, my uh, uncle, who lived in 99, flew for them back in World War II. So the uh, British Spitfire here, showing off the Merlin engine in this. This uh, museum is pretty packed, you get, uh, get a sense that uh, they got a lot of aircraft in here, a lot of my memorabilia in here. Planes. I mean, 262, the famous first jet aircraft that was built by the, uh, sorry, by the Germans in World War II. Not for the claustrophobic. We've got a ball turret here. Showing the 50 cal guns. Corsair. Alright, gonna go pop up here, take a look inside the Corsair. So yeah, inside the cockpit of the single seater Corsair. Used by the Marines. Showing you an RAF ready room here. Again, the other side of the uh, Spitfire. So, Royal Air Force. Yeah, pretty neat little dynamic here as far as the mock-up of the airfield and uh, airplane park right outside the ready room. We're moving from World War II. Air aircraft. The, uh, again, the Corsair, the F4U Corsair. This is the... Roman Hellcat fighter with his wings all folded up like he was out of a carrier deck, flight deck. And right above me, got the Zero, Japanese Zero. Got an A4 Skyhawk up here again. Uh, we're moved from the World War II into the pre- and Vietnam era aircraft. aircraft like on the A4 Skyhawk these things were built for functionality not for comfort ejection seat layout obviously the stick got all the trim control tabs here along the sides ejection sheet handle here and the, uh, the one in yellow down here navigation systems 
sighting system for the fire control up front here. So yeah, pretty neat. Again, tight fit. So we'll do a quick scan around here. That was the entrance over in this direction here. I'm standing up on a platform here so you kind of get a bird's eye view of what's going on at the A4 Skyhawk in front of me here. And a variety of Navy jets over there. So Navy up front. And a variety of Navy World War II aircraft over there. And one of the aircraft I didn't get a chance to talk much about, but it's the MQ-1. This was donated by General Atomics, who is here in town. I worked for them actually for about five years in Poway, and they had donated this to the San Diego Air and Space. Pretty nice little view of downtown San Diego from here. This is on the back deck here. And here in the center courtyard, it's called the Edwin D. McKellar Jr. Pavilion of Flight. And as we look across the pavilion, you'll see a white F-4 Phantom. Now, this was flown by... Lieutenant Commander Randy Cunningham and his radar intercept officer Willie Driscoll and this aircraft along with the two aviators shot down five MiG aircraft or North Vietnamese aircraft during the Vietnam War, our first ace of Vietnam. The good fortune to meet Randy in the mid-1970s when he was still on active duty as a lieutenant commander in the Navy, and uh, he had these business cards made up. It was really cool. Having had the opportunity for him to fly one of the MiG 21s that were captured during the Arab-Israeli War. Well, that about wraps it up, folks. Thanks for watching the video, and bye for now.